morning everyone Good morning. happy easter to you all it's lovely to be able to gather uh, together this morning on easter day uh, and to celebrate uh, yeah this this great day it's a strange old uh, time isn't it you know we've got the the signs of new life all around the spring breaking forth and um, lambs in the field just out here uh, which is lovely um, and yet all the uh, you know uncertainty and, and the um, the the things that are going on in our world as well it's certainly an easter i think we'll never forget um but i think as the queen said in her easter address you know we need easter as much as ever at a time like this don't we and the good news that easter brings of new life and new hope um and redemption and, and joy for all um so it's great to gather together and be able to to share that joy uh, this morning 
albeit in a very different way. And what we're going to do, and it's lovely to have Gracie here. Did you want to show us your Easter egg? Get the important things uh, <laughs> to start with. Oh, look at that. Nice big whisper egg. Nearly as big as your face, that one, isn't it? Your egg. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> but Gracie's going to help us light the candle as well uh, this morning. So um, if uh, Trina, you want to just help mm -hmm. it uh, light the Easter candle for us. And I'm just going to uh, pray a prayer as we, as we start and as we uh, light uh, this Easter candle and remember that uh, Jesus, the light of the world, uh, uh, reigns over all and is, um, is with us at this time. So let me just pray a quick prayer and then Grace is going to light the candle for us. So this is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the awesome power of God. As we hear his word and proclaim all that he has done, we can be confident that we will share his victory over death and live with him forever. So may the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and our minds. Amen. Thank you, Gracie. <laughs> and uh, we're going to say the, uh, this Easter acclamation, which will come uh, possibly at different points in the service, if I can remember to, to press it. Um, so, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Um, so, shall we sing our opening uh, hymn? And what, what else could we sing but Thine be the glory uh, to start with? So, here we go. Let's 
friends, so Lord, we thank you for this Easter morning. We thank you uh, for your love, for your faithfulness, your goodness to us. And we thank you for this chance to gather together and to remember uh, your victory and your love. So be with us now as we gather and lead us on and speak to us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's do it again. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amazing. Um, I'm just going to say uh, the collect um, for today. Uh, pray the prayer uh, that's uh, written for today. And then uh, we're going to have our two readings, the first of which uh, David has kindly uh, recorded for us. And then Trina will give us our second one. So Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your son overcame the old order of sin and death, to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Christ Jesus, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. 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 So we now have our first reading, which is uh, from Matthew's Gospel uh, today. A reading from St. Matthew's Gospel. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like a lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second reading is from Acts 10, verse 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened through the province of Judah, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by every people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach, the good people, preach to the people and testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Amen. 
Um, great. Yeah. Well, I don't know if um, if you've had, ever had a day of real uh, mixed emotions. Uh, sometimes it can be when a, uh, a baby is born. Uh, there's lots of thinking back to when our two were born. Lots of mixed emotions on a day like that. Sometimes a wedding day. Um, you know, there's lots of mixed emotions that can come there. That nervous anticipation and excitement mixed a little bit, perhaps, with a, a sense of a little sense of fear or dread. That was a joke. It's not really dread. Um, <laughs> no, there was no dread. There was no dread. But a little hint, you know, a few nerves and tingles of nerves out there, and, and mixed emotions on big days uh, like that. And you know, uh, on a day like today, on this Easter day, there may be. Uh, Many of us uh, have a sense of mixed emotions as well. You know, we've got the joys of this uh, wonderful celebration. Uh, we've got the signs of spring, the sunshine uh, around us. And yet we're living, aren't we, with uh, this sense of uncertainty uh, at this time. You know, as we wade our way uh, through this pandemic together, our usual routines and celebrations have been halted. Our friends and our families are at a distance. Our fears and anxieties are perhaps heightened. We might be feeling, in the midst of the celebration and the joy, uh, slightly at a loss. You know, these uh, days, uh, these days, uh, Easter is often a triumphant day for Christians, isn't it? You know, we sing our triumphant songs, we shout our loud alleluias, and quite rightly too. But you know, that first Easter day was a very different kind of day. It was a day of mixed emotions, of confusion and bewilderment a day of joy, but also a day of fears as well. And if this Easter is a little bit different to usual, then perhaps it's a little more like that first Easter day was for those first disciples of Jesus. You've got to feel a little bit for the disciples, haven't you? They've had a heart-wrenching uh, week. They've watched their ma master, their friend, the one that they put their hopes in, uh, be arrested, tried, humiliated, and then killed some of them had denied Jesus, most of them had abandoned him. In fact, it was only the women, uh, really, who had stood by him to the end. And then on the first day of the week, the Sunday, the day after the Sabbath, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary go down to look at the tomb. Mentally and emotionally exhausted, no doubt, and yet eager to see the place where their friend and their master lay. And they go early at dawn to see him. But when they arrive uh, out of the blue, uh, they meet this angel who tells them the strange news that Jesus isn't there, that he has risen just as he said he would. Then the two Marys, they go and see the place uh, where Jesus was laid, now empty, and they hurry back to the disciples to tell them the news. And they go with that strange mix of emotion, afraid and yet full of joy, uh, we're told. But on their way, before they reach the disciples, Jesus meets them. And in their fear and their wonder, they come to him, clasp his feet and worship. You know, what a day for them and for the others as they hear the news. Excitement, wonder, fear and joy all mixed together. And as time uh, went on, of course, as things started to sink in for the disciples, they begin to grow in confidence and boldness and hope. You know, that's what we see in our second reading from Acts today. By that time, Peter and the other disciples had really begun to understand the amazing thing that had happened. And empowered by the Spirit, they'd started to go out and boldly uh, tell anyone they could about the good news that, of what Jesus had done. We are witnesses, Jesus, uh, Peter uh, says, of everything Jesus did in the country of the Jews in Jerusalem. We are witnesses that they killed him by hanging him on the cross. But we are also witnesses that God amazingly, miraculously, victoriously raised him up from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. You know, Jesus is alive. That was their message everywhere they went from that point on. And you know, for me, that's one of the most uh, convincing proofs that this astounding resurrection really did happen. You know, these disciples go from being terrified, crippled with fear and huddled together in a room to boldly going out and proclaiming the good news that Jesus was alive, that they'd seen him and met with him. And as we see from what happened to them for sharing this message, they had nothing to gain from making up a story like this. And in fact, they had everything to lose, but they'd witnessed it. Jesus was alive and through him, 
there was, as Peter declared, forgiveness of sins for everyone who believes. You know, Peter, in Acts, after the news has sunk in, was filled with confidence and hope. But on the day it, was hap it happened, it was a very different picture. It was a day of mixed emotions, a day of joy, but also a day of fears. And the same may be true for us today as well. And yet, though things may uh, around us may seem uncertain, though the times may still seem unsure in many ways, the truth of what happened that first Easter day still stands secure. A new light has dawned. New life has come. Jesus is alive. And with his resurrection comes the assurance that death has been conquered and our sins have been covered. Jesus is alive. And with his resurrection comes the confidence that darkness is defeated and a new hope has dawned. Looking at our world uh, and looking at our current situation, we may think, really? You know, really? Is the darkness really defeated? Well, I've heard Easter Day being described before as a bit like D-Day. You know, D-Day, historians degree, uh, agree, was the decisive day in the Second World War. No, from the moment the Allied troops got a foothold back onto continental Europe, victory was in a sense uh, assured. The victory was won, the days of Nazi occupation were numbered. And yet, of course, for several difficult and painful months, the, the war would go on. Likewise, that first Easter day, Jesus won the decisive victory. He dealt with sin. He defeated the grave. He overcame the powers of darkness, making, as the Apostle Paul writes, a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. The enemy has been disarmed, but there is still work to do. The victory is assured, but there's still a battle to be fought. Death is indeed defeated, but there are still trials uh, to be faced. And so in the wake of Jesus' victory then, we continue to wait we continue to look to him and to look to his coming in glory. We continue to put our trust in him and to declare in the midst of our anxiety, our uncertainty, our wonder and our joy that Jesus is alive and therefore we need not fear. In this world, as Jesus said, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Shall we pray? Lord God, we thank you for the promise and the hope and the confidence we have because of Easter, because Jesus conquered the grave, because you raised him up by the power of your spirit to new life, that we might be forgiven and set free and our hope might be restored. So Lord, we rejoice in Jesus' victory. We rejoice in his sacrifice of love for us. But we rejoice that his death was not the end, that you brought him out into newness of life. And Lord, we thank you for the promise that that brings us, the confidence that that brings us today. That even in the midst of the ongoing struggles, the ongoing um, uh, battle, Lord, we can have confidence that Jesus is victorious, that Jesus has won. And that one day you will make all things new. One day, every tear will be wiped away. One day, there will be no more mourning, death or pain, for the old order of things will pass away. So Lord, Jesus, Lord, we look to Jesus this morning. We fix our eyes on him, the risen Lord and Saviour. Fill us with hope and joy and peace, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So as we respond to uh, that amazing Easter message, uh, as we reflect on it again today, and as we remember uh, that those words that Peter said at the end of that reading from Acts, that anyone who believes in the name of Jesus will find forgiveness of sins. I thought it'd be great for us to just affirm our faith together um, uh, today uh, in, in the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So the words...
Sorry, I think the sound dropped off for a moment there, but hopefully it's back now. So let's affirm our faith together with these words. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We, we believe, believe and trust, trust in, in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We, we believe, believe and trust, trust in, in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We, we believe, believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe and, and trust, trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. So as we continue to respond, we're going to sing, In Christ Alone, uh, My Hope is Found. So let's uh, sing this together. And just a reminder, even though we're in our own homes, do join in with us uh, if you can. Sing you... it loud. <laughs> sing it loud and proud.
Amen. So uh, we're going to have a short time of, of prayer now. Um, and I thought today it'd be great just to start with a, just a time of confession um, before Eve comes to leave, lead us uh, in some intercessions as well. So uh, to these uh, prayers, uh, there's a response. I'll say, in your mercy, forgive us. And then we respond, Lord, hear us and help us. So Jesus Christ, risen master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. Lord, we have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Lord hear, hear us and help us. us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Lord hear, hear us, us and help us. us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Lord hear, hear us, us and help us. us. So may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So Eve's going to lead us in a time of intercession and prayer. Our Easter Day prayers. The response this morning when I say, Lord, come in love, please respond with, and roll the stone away. Lord, come in love and roll the stone away. To begin, a prayer from David Adams' book, Tides and Seasons. Let the earth proclaim the joy of your name. Let each bulb rejoice, its growth be a voice. Let each seed and flower tell of your power. Let the glowing bright sun show the deed that is done. Let us hear from the rain, he is risen again. Let all repeat the refrain, he is risen again. Heavenly Father, we come before you in this most joyous of days, celebrating life in all its forms, offering thanks for your sacrifice for us and renewing our commitment to you. We enjoy the colours of spring as new life bursts forth from the ground. We see life in abundance as lambs frolic in the fields. We see the new light that spring sunshine brings and feel its warmth as the season moves towards summer. Today, Lord, we praise you for your unending love, your promise of eternal life. We thank you for the blessings you pour out for us and we offer our prayers and petitions in faith and hope, the hope that Jesus' resurrection has given for all who follow you. Lord, come in love and roll the stone away. Yet, Lord, this Easter celebration is unlike any other we have known. All around us there is fear of the coronavirus that is taking lives and changing not only our country, but all the world. We bring before you those already suffering the effects of the virus, but also those for whom self-isolation is becoming increasingly difficult. We pray for those who find the loneliness hard to bear, those who are anxious and afraid for the immediate future, those for whom finance is yet another hardship in these testing times. Lord, come in love and roll the stone away. We pray for your church, giving thanks that through the wonders of technology, many can still come together virtually to share your word sing your praises and feel the comfort of our church family. We pray for those who do not have the facility to join in this way, that they may find a way to worship you in the words of the Bible, familiar prayers and much loved hymns. Lord, come in love and roll the stone away. And we pray for the world. We pray for your protection over the whole world especially in those countries where medical help is unavailable or primitive. We pray too for all who are tending the sick in hospitals, in care homes and in their own homes. Give them protection and strength at this difficult time. May the light of your love penetrate the darkest of places. Lord, come in love and roll the stone away. 
and we remember with love those who have left this earthly life and those who mourn them. We pray especially for those who have died as a result of the virus and for families unable to share those final precious hours. May the message of Easter dispel the fear of death and bring comfort to those who grieve. Lord, come in love and roll the stone away. Lord Jesus, roll away the stones that form barriers in our journey of faith. Bring us to a greater understanding of your sacrificial love for us. Help us to see you clearly, as Mary did in the garden when you spoke her name. And to close, some words from Eddie Askew's Awakenings. Hold me for a moment, caught into that space in time, when heaven burst with exultation as recognition changed our world. And hold me just a little longer as awesome joy of such unprecedented force pours over me. And hold me, please, just a fraction more, so that I can hear again the voice that speaks and unbelief is broken. For quite clearly I hear not Mary, but another called, and my heart races with delight as the name you call is mine. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we uh, close our time of prayer, why don't we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Sorry if that was a bit of a surprise. I was suddenly <laughs> appearing back on the screen. Um, lovely. Well, we're going to sing our final uh, song uh, today. Um, there is a Redeemer. Great song that just reminds us um, of, of uh, how amazing uh, our God is and uh, that God is still at work through his spirit here, uh, here on earth, um, uh, in us and through us. Uh, and in our world so uh, we'll sing that and of course uh, we'll have a breath blessing and a final prayer as well after that
Amen. Well, just before we uh, have a final prayer of blessing, um, just to say there's if uh, we've got some family Easter packs in the church porch uh, today. So if, if you've got um, a family, then do go and grab uh, grab one of those, some activities and some, um, uh, yeah, some treats in there as well. So um, uh, do grab one of those today um, if you'd like to. The, the food bank is still uh, taking donations in the church porch as well. Um, so uh, if that's something you're able to uh, contribute to in the coming days uh, then then please do uh, feel free to um, and I just wanted to mention uh, too that um, uh, there's a spring spring harvest is uh, it's a Christian festival that that usually meets uh, in the Easter holidays in Skeg in Skegness at Butlins um, but because of the current situations they've moved everything online but it's actually uh, free for any, anyone to, to tune into so it's, it's this coming week uh, from tomorrow to uh, Friday um, and uh, I'll put the link up, it's springharvest.org, if you go to that you'll find it, um, but uh, I'll put the link up as well onto Facebook and through email, and if that's something that would be encouraging for you this week, there's, there's stuff for all ages, um, but it'd be a great, uh, it's a great, um, great that they're offering it out for free to anyone who'd, who'd appreciate that uh, this week. Um, and just to say as well, we'll have a service next Sunday, but we'll put some uh, info out that, about that. Uh, next uh, during the week as well so hopefully you'll be able to join us uh, next Sunday as well um, but it's been great to gather uh, together I um, hope you all have a, a, a lovely uh, Easter day and know God's peace God's blessing uh, and God's joy with you today uh, wherever you are um, and yeah that you know God's spirit uh, with you so why don't I just pray a, a final prayer of blessing uh, before we go so God the Father by whose love Christ was raised from the dead. Open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those whom you love, today and always. Amen. He is not here, he is risen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, I'm going to play, uh, actually, for uh, as, as we leave, uh, as we end the video, I'm going to play a little video. Uh, which you might want to uh, just watch and enjoy uh, just as we end our time together. But I hope you have a really happy Easter and God bless and we look forward to seeing you again uh, soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. It's finished. It's over. There's more of them than us and they look a lot bigger. The villain's got the girl and his fingers on the trigger. Voldemort, Sauron and Vader reign. It's gone to penalties against the Germans again. It's a terrible feeling when hope is erased, faith misplaced, virtue defaced, gloom embraced, reputation replaced with the taste of disgrace. When you've pushed every door and it's been slammed in your face, when you realize you're third in a two horse race. So come sit with me on Golgotha's slopes. See human history at its lowest ebb. See the forces of goodness and grace on the ropes. Evil had spoken, last rites read. In a phony gown and thorny crown, he's mocked and knocked and shamed. As he staggers down through an angry town, they spit and hit and hate. Hands that forged galaxies and flung starry trails are pierced and punctured by merciless nails. His body succumbing to brutal infliction. These, the horrors of crucifixion. And as dice are tossed, hope is lost. Desolate disciples count the cost. King of the Jews, his headrest embossed. A criminal's killing on Calvary's cross. And as last words cut through foul-smelling air, the whole of the cosmos cries out in despair. It is finished. It's over. But then...
Then dawn breaks on Easter day, darkness quakes as shadows give way to the light. See, resurrection's the plan, it's why God sent him. And the comeback's on, there's a change of momentum. The powers of damnation in previous jubilation have been hushed and crushed by the Lord of creation. See, he takes the hit, stands where we should have stood, and that's why we call Friday good. And he's back with life and with us and blessed. And that's why we can know it as Sunday best. So to the 4-0 down, to the backs against the wall, listen to his rallying resurgent call. And to those up against it in brokenness and pain, Easter's story roars, we go again. So thine be the glory, death's lost its sting. Here's to Jesus, the comeback king.